real quick before we get into the video, I did want to let you guys know that when I'm not chasing storms, my day job is actually doing contract work as an independent insurance adjuster. As an independent adjuster, or IA, you can work for yourself and make really good money handling claims, especially after catastrophic weather events like a hailstorm or hurricane. To learn more about this career, I recommend checking out the sponsor of this video, Adjuster TV. You can even go over there and watch a video where I go into more detail about my personal career, how I got started, and how I'm able to still follow my passion of storm chasing. Head over to the Adjuster TV YouTube channel or adjustertv.com slash storm to learn more. Now back to the video. After spending less than a week home following Helene, I found myself right back on a flight to Tampa, Florida. On October 5th, a small area of low pressure that had been meandering around the Caribbean and lower Gulf was now starting to show signs of organization. The area was then upgraded to a tropical depression on the 6th, and by early morning of the 7th, we had a full-blown hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. This caught just about everybody off guard, as only a few days earlier, most models had the storm completely fizzling out. Now the hurricane named Milton was intensifying and at one of the most rapid paces ever documented in the Atlantic Basin. Watch how this area of loosely circulating convection turns into a pristine, symmetrical monster of a storm with the tiny pinhole eye. By the evening of October 7th, Milton had become a stout Category 5. Each flight from the NOAA hurricane hunters revealed massive pressure drops, sometimes even dropping more than 10 millibars between passes. The pressure eventually bottomed out at 897 millibars, making Milton the fifth lowest pressure ever recorded in the Atlantic. Our same chase crew from Helene was getting back together for Milton. Michael and I flew from OKC to Tampa and arrived to the chilling sound of everyone's EAS alerts going off at once for the storm surge warning in effect. For the next few minutes, so please remain seated with your seatbelts fastened and all items stowed until we're completely stopped at the gate and the seatbelt sign is turned off. We hopped into our rental and on our way to meet up with Aaron, we couldn't help but stop and start documenting some of the traffic as a mass evacuation was underway. People were really taking this one seriously after Helene had outperformed so many's expectations. October 8th was our day to scope the coastline for locations to ride out the storm. Models at this time were still showing a potential landfall anywhere from north of Tampa Bay to down near Venice. A landfall north of Tampa Bay would be the most catastrophic scenario as storm surge would funnel directly into the bay and inundate the populated communities surrounding the metro. A landfall closer to Sarasota or Venice would pump surge into a less populated stretch of coastline, but it would still be extremely damaging for those areas. All of this was exacerbated by the fact that Helene had actually done really significant damage to pretty much the entire western Florida coastline. Even though Helene tracked over 100 miles west of Tampa, the massive surge extended well away from the center. Populated coastal communities such as St. Pete and Clearwater Beach were badly damaged by this and surprisingly it didn't get much news coverage, especially when compared to the Carolinas. We got special access onto a couple barrier islands, including Madeira Beach, where piles of rubble lined the neighborhood's streets. There was a desperate effort to try and clean as much of this up as possible, as anything left behind would be subject to the surge from Milton, and it would only make the situation worse. We spent the day documenting these efforts while also looking for possible locations that we could deploy our storm probes and ride out the storm ourselves. Milton had briefly weakened to a Category 4 after an eyewall replacement cycle, but now that that was complete, it was back up to a monster Category 5. Wednesday, October 9th was landfall day, and we started heading towards Venice as computer models had finally started agreeing on a more southern track. Miraculously, we lucked out by finding another massive condo right by the water. We made conversation with an elderly couple that was planning on riding out the storm there and asked if they would give us access to their stairwells so we could document the water as it came in. They agreed and even invited us inside their condo as the outer bands started coming ashore. It was around this time that numerous cells in the outer bands started going tornado worn and we had a tough decision to make. If we started chasing these tornadic supercells off to the east, we would use up quite a bit of gas, which is precious during a hurricane chase. Virtually every gas station was closed at this point, so all we had to work with was what was in our tank and a few spare five gallon jugs we had. 
We ultimately determined that it probably wasn't worth it to go chase these tornado-worn storms, so we stayed put in Venice. This decision was probably a mistake, as it ended up being one of the most prolific tornado outbreaks I've ever seen associated with a hurricane. Nearly 50 tornado reports have been logged by the SPC, and it's just very rare to see so many high contrast, strong tornadoes from a tropical system, as usually they're murky and difficult to see. Just do yourself a favor and check out my friend Nick's intercept from this monster tornado that occurred during this outbreak. Listen to the roar. As evening approached, the western eyewall of the now Category 3 storm started inching its way ashore. Our plan was to drive around during the first portion of the storm and film the wind, then work our way back to the condo right before the surge started coming in. Since we were once again dealing with a nighttime landfall, we only put up one camera probe in a mobile home park across the street from where we were staying. And it didn't take long for things to start coming apart all around us. As darkness fell and power flashes lit the sky, we made our way back to the condo to prepare for the storm surge. Once the wind switched direction, the water would start rising and we wanted to be ready to document it. started coming in. About five minutes ago, it's getting up to the edge of this concrete. Now it's almost up to the parking lot. The wind had now completely switched directions and the surge was beginning to fill the parking lot. Not only was the water about to get bad, but due to the development of a powerful sting jet, the winds were actually about to be even stronger on the backside of this storm. All right, storm surge is coming in really fast. We've got a couple of feet out there and it's going to be through here in probably 10 minutes.
lost the rest of the power. What? The rest of the power just went out in our building. As the wind started calming down and the water started receding, we headed back up to the condo, and other than a bit of water leaking through the sliding glass door, the unit was actually in quite good shape. The owners were very kind and invited us to crash on their couches, which we gladly accepted. Morning light revealed a complete mess in Venice. Trees and lines were down everywhere, and sheet metal was thrown about. But the worst damage was right along the beach, where the storm surge and winds were highest. The most intense damage actually occurred about 15 to 20 miles further south where peak surge appeared to be. During landfall, the hurricane actually slid a bit further south than most of us had expected, which put the most direct onshore flow down by Inglewood and Mansota Key. After documenting damage for about an hour or so, we left the area as evacuees began to flood back in. Since Tampa was such a mess, Michael and I had our flight switched to Miami and headed back to Oklahoma while Aaron stayed for a few extra days to document damage. 2024 was certainly an active season in terms of landfalls. I was personally there for Beryl, Francine, Helene, and Milton, making it my busiest season since 2020. But 2024 will truly be remembered for the storm surge. The raw power of the water is both mesmerizing and terrifying, and I really wouldn't recommend that any chasers or residents take some of the risks that we did this year. Finally, my thoughts remain with all of those impacted by the worst of the storms. There will once again be donation links in the pinned comment, and I hope everybody considers helping out as there's still a ton of recovery efforts underway. Thank you all again so much for watching, and thank you Adjuster TV for sponsoring this video. Stay safe out there, and I'll catch you guys out there on the next one.